Joe, we have a video we'd like to play for you. Okay. Cue it up here. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles is a fucking million communities. Saying independent storytelling is one thing, new media is one thing, web series is one thing. It's so fucking stupid. There's no mainstream in the independent. Within those categories, there's a billion subcategories. And I'm a tiny little fragment of nothing. Go, go to my IMDb page. There's nothing there. I'm nobody. But the audience who knows what I do, that's who I'm somebody to. And that's who I, all I fucking care about. Because I don't get, I don't get, I don't get hired by the audience and fired by the audience. We have a, I tell stories, they help me tell stories. Pretty easy business plan. Again, not for everybody. Sponsors, you know, they want that number. Awards, they want that number. But audiences, they just care about stories. Even, with, even if you tell stories with actors no one's heard of, is it a good story? How many stories have won Oscars with completely unknown casts, unknown directors? That shit happens. It's not just what's number one at the box office. It's not the number one rated show. You know, again, Arrested Development, Family Guy, these shows that got canceled and are now coming back after years of an audience build. That's the matrix. That's the thing that we can, we have over them. We can tell a story worldwide. We can keep going. We don't have to hit weekly ratings. We don't hit, need to hit box office. We don't need to think about that. We don't need to think about awards. We can change the rules, change the way things happen, and not emulate all these past systems. New game, new way to do things, new systems, new validation systems, all new individuals. We each come up with our own way to do it, our own individual business plans. We don't need validation from anyone other than the audience, and you only need that much validation as an indie storyteller to keep going. Because if you're looking for an Oscar, Jesus, you better fucking be eating carbohydrates every goddamn day, because that is a long run, and, and, it's, and it's an empty errand. I'd rather, I'd rather entertain real people and hear from real people than Please, some unknown body of whatever so they say, good job. That's bullshit. That's not real. That's not human. At all. I'm starting with a fork. And that was a shot courtesy of Nick's Coffee Shop. <laughs> great place, great setting. Yes. I love that we still, I don't know, this was in 2013, I believe. Mm -hmm. So just is kind of cool to see yeah. in that setting. and. Um, I know they were uh, very generous with you to let you shoot and do different things. Yeah. There. What's your take on seeing that video, where you were, mm -hmm. just your thoughts on creating stories? I guess uh, I guess I was right about all the stories that were coming because <laughs> now there's a billion of them. Um, I guess I think the. The thing about um, audience, like now that I, a bunch of time has passed, like I have, I've met so many people, internet neighbors who have helped me tell stories at Nick's and other places. Um, that's, I, that's why the audience is their neighbors. I think that the, the, what I was saying about talking to the audience, I've been talking to the audience for years. And so when I'm telling a story, I'm thinking about people I know who will either see it or read it. And it's, you know, not no, like, you know, no, no, but as far as you can know people on the internet, that's why I, the term neighbor is, I don't know, it's, Friends is a little strong, I think, and neighbors is a little more like, you know, you have neighbors, you're friends with your neighbors, but it's that neighbor friendship where you're like, you know, you don't want to get in each other's business too much, but everybody wants to get along. It's like that kind of thing. And I think with people that you know on the internet, it becomes sort of like that. And, and it, you build the social media neighborhood that you want to live in. If you don't want to hear about all the bad stuff, then you filter all the bad stuff and block those words. And then Twitter can, you make a list that is exactly, people who don't piss me off, that's a good list to have. Make that list. So you can go on Twitter, just look at that list. Nothing bad's happening on that list. It's all nice. Um, but the next thing that I, when the book comes out and when the graphic novel comes out, 
because I've been talking to the audience, to my neighbors in my neighborhood all this time, it's inherently different than if I was just filmmaker in marketing mode on social media and all I do is talk about my project, me, my making a film, my, my going into a film festival, uh, here's the next project, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, people are interested in that, but I, you know, people know my cat because I post my cat all the time. And does it have anything to do with filmmaking? No. Do people have cats? Yes. Do people, I started a band with my cat called Mike and Me. We don't make music because I don't know how to play any instruments and he doesn't have a thumb. So, <laughs> two of them even. So, we just make the album covers and, and it's entertaining, it's amusing. So when I show up with something that's like meaty, like here's a book, then they're gonna be like, oh, you wrote a book, cool. Joe wrote a book, this guy that I've been talking to for years. So different than, hey, anybody wanna read this book? Anybody? Anybody is now I'm marketing. Now I'm advertising, now I'm promoting. Before it's just my neighbors. Hey, you guys wanna wanna come over and see something I'm um I made? I'm gonna project it up on a sheet on the wall. That's pretty much what it feels like. And that you can fit a lot of people in, in that room on the internet with that sheet on the wall. Because it's on the internet. And it again, you're stories can last like uh i can't remember somebody told me oh i know what it was um rupaul had a has a game show i guess i don't see it but it has a game show and i sold a jar of celebrity air in 2005 it was a jar of air that was captured within proximity to brad pitt and angelina jolie at the mr and mrs smith premiere and it made international news it was on access hollywood jay leno did a bit about it it was gigantic and somebody sent me a screen grab from RuPaul's show and the question on the bottom was did someone sell a jar of air from Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and it was you know it was like last year and so that was from 05 and so the I can't remember who told me about it but when he sent me the screen grab he, he said I said I'm amazed that people still would even care about that because Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, they're over and he's like, clever is forever. Oh. And I'm like, clever is forever. I like that. That's really good. So I think that, I think that you can, as an indie, make small stuff that is clever that maybe people will look at down the line. I've made a point to not put references to current day time. I didn't want to use any current slang. I didn't want anything that would date it. So I made up my own slang. There's references to, man, there's references to happy days. There's references to it's a wonderful life. Like I pulled slang from everywhere because it, that now it's its own world. It can't go bad. There's no reference to anything because then people can go, oh, I remember when that happened. Oh, this is old. And if they never reference anything, there's no, there's no date on it. You don't know. They never say. That's why I think, you know, the, the advantage to telling stories in the 80s now is because nobody had a cell phone. So you can't text now all your plot holes. Because so many plot holes. Are really, I just text. Yeah, the whole show's over because it's the 80s and I, I have this and I shouldn't have this. I can just, I can, oh, you want, you need to talk to somebody across town? Like, okay. As opposed to driving to their house. Oh, they're not here. You stay here and wait. And then I'll go in there. No, totally different story. Clever is forever.